वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय चैप्टर 18 टेक्स्ट 51 टू 53 मुद्यादयुक्त धृतियात्मानीयुदेशवासी यथावाकाय मानस ध्यान योग पर वैराग्यम सूपाश्रीत अहंकारम बल दर्पम कामं क्रोधम परिग्रह विमुच निर्मम शांत ब्रह्म भूयाय कल्पते being purified by his intelligence and controlling the mind with determination giving up the objects of sense gratification being freed from attachment and hatred one who lives in a schedule place place who eats little who controls his body mind and power of speech who is always in trance and who is detached free from false ego false strength false pride lust anger and acceptance of material things free from false proprietorship and peaceful such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self realization <clears throat> text 54 एवरीथिंग every living entity in that state he attains pure devotional service unto me text 55 bhakti mam abhijanati yavan yashchasmi tatvatah tato mam tatvato gnatva visate tat anantaram one can understand me as i am as the supreme personality of god head only the devotional service and when one is in full consciousness of me i can enter into the kingdom of god text 56 tarva karmani api sada kurvano mat yapashrit vapash mat prasadat bhavati shashvatam padam उदीयोग उपाश्रित्य मचित सततम भव in all activities just depend upon me and work always under my protection in such devotional service be fully conscious of me text 58 machitah sarva durgane mat prasadat tarishyasi atha chetvam ahankaran nashrosyasi vinakshyasi if vinakshyasi If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not walk in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. Text fifty-nine. Yat ahankaram asritya na yosya iti manyase mityesa vyavasa yaste. Prakrutistam niyokshyati. If you do not act according to my direction and do not fight, then you will be falsely directed by your nature. You will have to be engaged in warfare. Text sixty. Sabha jena konteya nivadhasvena karmana 
कर्तुम निचसी यं मोहा करिष्यसी अवशो पीतत अन्नर इल्यूशन यू आर नाउ डिक्लाइनिंग टू एक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू माय डायरेक्शन बट compelled by the work born of your own nature you will act all the same o son of kunti text 61 ishwara sarva bhutanam hrida desha arjuna tistati brahmayam sarva bhutani yantra rudani mayaya the supreme lord is situated in everyone's heart o arjuna and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy text 62 tameva sharanam gacha sarva bhavana bharata tat prasadat param shantim sthanam prapsyasi shashvatam Oscar no par surrender unto him utterly by his grace you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode text 63 iti te gnanam akhyatam guya guyataram maya vimshraye tat asheshena yathe cha sita tha kuru Thus, I have explained to you knowledge still more confidential. Deliberate on this fully, and then do what you wish to do. Text thirty-four. Sarva guya tamam guya shino me paramam vachha isto si me dridam iti tato vaksya mita hitam. Because you are my very dear friend, I'm speaking to you my supreme instruction. the most confidential knowledge of all hear this from me for it is it is for your benefit text 65 man mana mava man mana bhava mat bhakto madhyadi mam namaskaru mam evashya sri satyam te prati jane priyo sri me always think of me become my devotee worship me and offer your homage unto me thus you will come to me without fail i promise you this because you are my very dear friend text 66 sarva dharma paridyata mam ekam sharanam raja aham tam pap sarva pape pyo moksha yishyami ma suchah abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me i shall deliver you from all sinful reactions do not fear text 67 idam te nata idam te nata paskaya na bhaktaya kadachana na cha susru save vakyam na cha mam yo vyasu yati this confidential knowledge may never be explained to those who are not austere or devoted or engaged in devotional service no to one who is envious of me text 68 ye idam paramam guyam mat bhakte swabi das kati bhakti mayi param kritva mame vaishyati asamshaya ha For one who explains the supreme secret to the devotees, pure devotional service is guaranteed, and at the end he will come back to me. Text sixty-nine. Nacha tasma manusyesu kachime priya krita maha bhavita nacha me tasma anya priya taro bhuvi. There is no servant in this world more dear to me than he, nor will there ever be one more dear. Text seventy. Adhyasyate cha ya imam dharmam samvadam avyo nana yagne na te na ham istha sham iti me mati. and i declare that he who studies this secret conversation of ours worships me by his intelligence text 71 satavan anu anasu yascha shino yat apiyo narah sopi mukta subalokam prapnu yat punya karmanam 
and one who listens with faith and without envy becomes free from my simple reactions and attains to the auspicious planets where the pious dwell. Text 72. Achid eta shritu shrutam partha to yeka grena ketasa kachit agnan agnana samoha pranas taste dhananjaya. O son of Pratha, O Pankaru of wealth, have you heard this with an attentive mind? And are your ignorance and illusion now dispelled? Text 73. Arjun Vacha Nasta Moha Smriti Labda Tvat Prasada Maya Chita Titosmi Gata Sandeha Karishya Vachanam Tava Arjun said, my dear Krishna, O infallible one, my illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy. I'm now firm and free from doubt and I'm prepared to act according to your instructions. Text 74. Sanjay Vacha iti aham vasudevasya patasya cha mahatmanaha samvadam ibma asrausam Abhutam Roma Harshanam. Sanjay said, Thus have I heard the conversation of two great souls, Krishna and Arjun, and so wonderful is that message that my head is standing on end. Text 75. Vyasa Prasada Shruta Vam, Itad Guyam Aham Param, Yogam Yogeshwara, Krishna. Saksat Kataya Taha Swayam. By the mercy of Vyas, I have heard these most confidential talks directly from the master of all mysticism, Krishna, who was speaking personally to Arjun. Text 76. Rajan Samskritya Samskritya Samvadam Idam Atputam Kesavarjuna Yo Punyam Isayamicha Muhu Muhu. O King, as I repeatedly recall this wondrous and holy dialogue between Krishna and Arjun, I take pleasure being thrilled at every moment. Text 77. Tatsha samstritya samstritya rupam ati adbutam hare vishmayo me mahan rajan isayami cha puna puna. O King, as I remember the wonderful form of Lord Krishna, I'm stuck with wonder more and more, and I rejoice again and again. Text 78. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Pata Danudara Tatra Shri Vijaya Bhutir Dhruva Nithir Matir Mama. Whenever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and Wherever there is Arjun, the Supreme Archer, there will also certainly be opulence. That is my opinion. Iti Shema Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastra Sri Krishna Arjun Samvade Moksha Sanyasa Yoga Nama Asta Dasho Adhyayaha. Thank you. Hare thank you. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, uh, Prabhuji and Mataji. That was wonderful. Prabhuji, your Sanskrit is beautiful. And Mataji, your English was flowing just at the same space as Prabhuji. Lovely. Thank you. You threw a, a lifeline at us coming straight from India and now we are now rejuvenated. <laughs> ah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. So today I have the very daunting task of trying to do a summary of the 18th chapter, which is, as you all know, um, quite a big chapter. So I hope that I am able to do some justice, but let's see. We shall see. Um, just give me a minute and I will share the screen. Everybody can see? Yes, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. All right. So before we start, let's just say our uh, prayers. 
ओम अज्ञान ज्ञानंजन शलाकाया चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशकुर्द कृपा सिंधु पतिता पवनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चतादेशिणे All right. So um, let's start. Um, as you know, it is it is quite a big chapter, and what we will do is what I'm trying to do is broken it down into sections because otherwise it would be very difficult to discuss. Um, chapter eighteen is actually the um, conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita, as I'm sure you all know. You've been reciting these verses probably for the past. 78 days because there are 78 verses in the chapter 18 so um, you all are i'm sure well versed with the chapter 18 so um, today it's going to be more of a interactive thing and we'll have discussions because um, we we can share what we have learned in the past few days so let's start with um, the first section uh, chapter 18 is perfection of renunciation and what is the perfection of renunciation but attachment to krishna so in this chapter after going through various other sections of the bhagavad gita um, we've seen the karma yoga and gyana yoga and all of that the chapter 18 actually krishna speaks about the same things again so like we said it is a, a it is a conclusion of the bhagavad gita and a, and a kind of a summation of the bhagavad gita so in this um, section the first section the text 1 to 12 is the karma section where um krishna is explaining to um arjuna how one must not give up action but actually give up the attachment and um um chapters 1 to 6 of the bhagavad gita actually talk about the same thing about karma now here um krishna is actually giving the answer to arjuna's question about um sanyas and tyaga right so why is all this coming up because if you remember initially i know we've not done the first few chapters of the bhagavad gita but initially when Krish, when arjuna was on the battlefield of kurukshetra after seeing his friends and relatives and um grandfather and his teacher he was um, very very distressed and he did not want to fight he wanted to give up his duties and he wanted to renounce so you will see how this chap th- these few verses again is related to the same kind of conflict not that arjuna is having that conflict but because this is a summary so krishna is talking about the same things again over here so um yeah we are talking about what is to renunciation so um does anybody want to um say what do you understand by um true renunciation any any volunteers who want to just say what your understanding is nobody hari krishna mata ji yes rupa my humble obeisances um i think uh, renunciation 
by renunciation uh, krishna krishna means renunciation in action not renunciation of action mm -hmm. yeah that's very so, uh, giving up the results to krishna yeah. or doing everything for for the sake of for for pleasing krishna correct that's very good so um you yeah. see what what is happening to arjuna that a lot of time happens to us when we start our spiritual journey when we take up krishna consciousness or any spiritual path the 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 thing that comes to our mind is that we have to give up all our duties and responsibilities and start living like a a monk or you know or um go to the temple and start living like that like that so you know it's there's an extreme a and extreme b one extreme is where you want to give up all your actions and the other extreme is where you know um we are talking about people who are not very spiritual are so very attached to the results now the bhagavad gita actually is giving us a middle ground and what is the bhagavad gita saying is that you must perform the activities but the results have to be given up and that is what krishna is explaining to um arjuna because the fact is that none of us can stay without performing any activities and in the chapter 3 verse 5 there is this verse where it says nahi kashchit chanam api um what is that verse the ish i can't remember the whole verse the english is that one cannot stay without performing any activity for even a single moment so if one thinks that one is living in this world but will not perform activities that is a false renunciation and that is what krishna is explaining that you cannot even to arjuna he is saying that you cannot give up your activity so this is what is being spoken about in the verses 1 to 12 where one has to have a balanced understanding so uh, the idea is that you perform activities don't be attached to the results perform the activities for the pleasure of krishna and that is true renunciation there is a term in the bhagavad gita i don't know if a lot of people have heard but do you know the term about uh, how we can use everything and every activity for um krishna and that is called the actual true renunciation yukta vairagya yes jay radhika yukta vairagya so that is true renunciation where you can actually use everything in krishna's service the false renunciation is where you think that you will renounce everything and and in some of the lectures i used to hear and they said what is it that you can renounce nothing belongs to you anyways everything is krishna's everything belongs to krishna you know your your body belongs to krishna your soul belongs to krishna forget about the other things that is around you the material things but your body itself belongs to krishna so what are you going to renounce and that is why the true the correct renunciation and prabhupada explains this many times is yukta vairagya where you use everything in krishna's service and that is the true renunciation so um again uh, krishna is explaining this to arjuna in these um few verses of um, the 18th chapter right okay so in the next um, uh, section um krishna talks about the five doers now this section is so very important to understand and we have like i said because it is things are getting repeated over here so we have already studied this how i am not the doer and you know all of those things but we tend to forget so here again <clears throat> what krishna is trying to do here is um explaining to arjuna and using knowledge using gyana uh, and you know kind of convincing him that you must perform your duty because you're not the only doer so there are five doers and this here explains who the five doers are so the place of action that is your body when we talk about kshetra that is your body the place of action the performer that you the various senses the many different kinds of endeavor and ultimately the super soul so these are the five factors of action so you alone are never the doer there's always so many other factors involved and again 
I understand we've not done the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, but we have spoken about this a lot of times in our chat sessions. Um, that, and this is the verse that I was talking about Prakriti Kriya Manani Gune Karmani Sarvasha Ahankara Vimudhatma Karta Ahamiti Manyate. So the spirit soul, because he's bewildered by these modes of nature, by, by the influence of the false ego, he thinks that all the activities are carried out by him. But like it says in the verse 16 of the chapter 18, one who thinks himself the only doer is certainly not very intelligent and cannot see things as they are. So here again, um, Krishna is repeating what has been spoken in the third chapter, where um, it's being explained that you are not the doer. You have to perform the activities based on the body that you're in, based on the modes of material nature acting upon you, and of course, the sanction of the super soul. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's some sound. I'm just gonna mute people. Yeah, so here again, um, Krishna is explaining the exact same thing that uh, don't think that you are the doer. And now a very interesting aspect then comes forth here that if you are not the doer alone, then also the fruits and the results of these, these activities is not yours alone. You see, yes. so this is a very, very interesting um, aspect to understand that um, unless, the, unless the super soul permits you to do something, you cannot do anything. And we've heard this so many times, not even a blade of grass will move without the permission of uh, the Lord. So if Anybody who thinks that I'm the doer alone is foolish. That's again being emphasized. The 18th chapter is an emphasis of all that is being spoken already. So again and again, the same things being emphasized by Krishna. See again here how merciful Krishna is that on this battlefield of Kurukshetra, when such a huge war is going to be fought, but he is still, you know, he wants Arjuna to understand everything. And that is how that is how um, Krishna and his representatives are. They want us to understand. They are willing to explain again and again to us. Right. Okay. Right. So the next few verses, that's verses 18 to 40, is um, where we are talking about the modes of material nature. And the modes of material nature have been very, very um, in detail spoken about in chapter 14 and then again in chapter 17. So all of us know the modes of material nature. Before I understood how the modes of material nature act, I did not realize that every activity actually and for me it was actually a very wonderful experiment so the first time when i studied the bhagavad gita and i studied and i kind of tried to understand the modes of material nature and you know our teacher was saying how every action everything could be put into these different modes obviously the foods was easy to do but you know then they spoke about the music and then they spoke about um all your various activities and and it's, you know, it, it's the, for me, the first time it was just, it was an experiment to understand this. And here again, you will see that um, all these various things, like one wouldn't think that, you know, intelligence could be in these different modes, but here Krishna is explaining how knowledge. So first he talks about how knowledge is in three modes. And uh, it's explained that knowledge about the spirit soul beyond this body is in Sattvaguna. Knowledge producing many theories by dint of mundane logic and speculation is the product of Rajaguna. And knowledge concerned only with keeping the body I hope I have muted everybody. 
Can I request all the devotees to please be mute because it um, disturbs otherwise? Thank you. So yes, um, uh, so knowledge about, you know, uh, and this is so important that understanding that um, the spirit soul is in each and every living entity. But, and that, that knowledge is in Sattva Gunna, but then thinking that, you know, it's just the body and what you see in front of you is this, you know, it's a body, this is an animal, this is an elephant, this is a tiger, this is so-and-so, not realizing that the spirit soul that is in this body is the same as what's in my body. So that, of course, is in, is in um, Tamaguna. So, you know, that's, that's knowledge and Krishna is describing all that here. Then work in the different modes is being described. Now, um, I don't want to go into the details because you've all studied all these verses, but we'll just pick up a few few points, you know. Um, does anybody want to um, comment on what work in the three modes would be? And I request all of you to interact because then otherwise I'm just speaking and this is a summary. So everybody already knows things. Any, any volunteers who wants to give us an idea of what work in three modes uh, would be? Okay. Um, I'll, Hello. I'll... Hello. Yes, Nima Mataji. Uh -huh. Hare Krishna. Yes, the uh, work in uh, three modes is like uh, if we work uh, without thinking of uh, the things and uh, uh, just do badly, that is in the mode of ignorance. Mm -hmm. And um, if we work something for the desire of a good result, or um, acquiring something out of work, then it's in a mode of passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we just do a work and uh, work for Krishna and not willing for any good result or bad result without caring, just do our duties, that's in a mode of goodness. Very good, Seema Mataji, thank you so much. You have very, very eloquently and it precisely described this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Right. Uh, anybody wants to describe worker in three modes? It's, it's better, isn't it, rather than just me talking, because these are just points. If not... Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Madhya Kumari. Thank you. Yes. Hare Krishna Madhya Kumari. Hare Krishna. Uh, I just thought, um, you know, like the way the Barnastram Dharma also been, uh, uh, been prescri described, is like Brahman, Bhaisya, Kshatriya. And sh sorry, Bra Brahman, Katriya, Bhaisya, Shudra. Mm. These are also in different modes, would you say? Um, like Brahmana. You know, um, Palika Mataji, the thing is, yes, they could be in different modes, but if you think about it, the Brahmana could be performing activity in mode of goodness, ignorance, and passion. So just the Varnas actually will not discuss put him in the category of the three modes in that sense. Okay. If yeah. I'm making sense here. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, so the main thing over here is that worker who is able to perform his activities without um, attachment to yeah. the work, without thinking uh, of the false ego, without thinking that he is the doer, is obviously in the mode of goodness. Very true. Yes. And, and then somebody who is attached and he wants to enjoy the results and that's the only reason why he's doing the work is the worker in the mode of passion. And yes. somebody who is doing, you know, not following any rules, just doing things because that's the way he is. He's a senior. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that, that would be in the mode, mode of ignorance. Of yes, yes. Thank right. you. Right. Thank you. Hare Krishna. And then this is very in interesting, intelligence or understanding in the three modes. Now, what it means by intelligence or understanding is intelligence on what is right, what is wrong, what is to be done, what is not to be done. These kind of thoughts, this is your intelligence in the mode of goodness, right? Um, then in the mode of passion, you know, uh, it's like you don't, you don't think about what is religious, what is irreligious, you will just do the things because you want to do it for your own happiness or satisfaction. So that's in the mode of um, passion. And then in the ignorance is where you will do exactly opposite of what is being asked. So that's in the uh, mode of ignorance. 
So anyways, we won't go uh, through all of them because you've done this in detail when you've um, studied all these uh, verses. But the point here is in verse 40, the conclusion that Krishna is saying is that there is no being existing on earth or heavens which is freed from these three modes born of material nature. So nobody is free of these modes of material nature and that is important to understand, all right? Um, so what we have to take from here and what we have to apply is that among all the things made of the three gunas, those in the mode of goodness should be accepted because they alone are useful. And those things in the lower modes should be rejected. Right? So when we say among all the things, it means um, food, music, leisure activities, um, your um, shastras or scriptures or, you know, everything, everything can be put in these boxes. And what is important for us in order to progress on our spiritual journey is to accept the things that are in the mode of uh, goodness. Right, okay. Change this. Right. And then um, from the verses 41 to 48, um, what is being described now is so, see, Krishna is taking um, us and Arjuna, of course, Arjuna and then through Arjuna, us again through the stages of Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, and then Bhakti Yoga. So now he's describing how by performing our prescribed duties, we can purify ourselves by offering those, you know, whatever activity we are doing and doing it as a worship to the Lord. And then, you know, getting detached from all these activities and getting attached to Krishna through the performance of our activities. So that's very interesting. Nowhere in the Bhagavad Gita, it's being said that you need to stop performing your activities. That is not the conclusion. So um, in, in, in 41 to 44, those verses, the four different Varnas are being described. So uh, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Chudra is being described. And then um, the very important thing here, this verse 47, it says is, it is better to engage in one's own occupation, even though one may perform it imperfectly then to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly. Duties prescribed according to one's nature are never affected by sinful reactions. This is so important for all of us to understand because in today's world, and Prabhupada used to say this all the time in his lectures that um, Varnashram is not something that has um, just come. Krishna has, has created this. So it is existing everywhere, even today, even in the Western world, one may not realize it, but it is there. And what he meant when he said this was, there is a part of society who is considered the intelligent class. There is a part of society who is more, um, you know, who is more inclined towards um, um, administration or armed forces or, you know, those kinds of things. There is a class which is more inclined towards, uh, you know, selling and doing all kinds of business activities and making money out of it. And then there is a class which is, which, you know, is not interested in any of these and, and who wants to just serve them. So if you will notice in the society around you, you will see that there are these kinds of people and, and very clearly in the Bhagavad Gita, it is, it is um, said that it does not happen by birth. Like um, Prabhupada gives this very nice analogy that just because you're the son of a doctor, you don't become a doctor unless you train to be one. Likewise, just because you're born of a Brahmana does not make you a Brahmana unless you have the qualifications and you're performing the activities of a Brahmana. Like today, if you go to India, you will be surprised to see how much the Brahmana class has degraded and and the kind of activities that they are performing. And that is why it is important to understand that uh, this system, this Varnashram was not um, made according to birth, but it was made according to Guna. And what is being spoken over here is, it is best to perform your own duties in the sense that what your Guna is, what your nature is, 
if my nature is that um, I am, you know, um, I'm very good, I'm a shudra, I'm very good at like, I enjoy cleaning up and washing the dishes and that. So suddenly one fine day, I should not say that I'm not going to do this. I am going to um, go to the university and start teaching. That is not my guna, that is not my nature. And that's why it's very clearly being said here, it is better to do your own occupation, even though one may perform it imperfectly because by performing the duties prescribed to you, you will not be affected by sinful reactions. Very, very important verse this is to understand because um, you know, think about this, that sometimes it so happens that yes, the Brahmana duties are in the mode of goodness. They are in Sattva Guna. Does it mean that the Vaishyas and the Shudras and the Kshatriyas should, because they are in the lower modes of uh, passion and ignorance, should they then go and do uh, the duties of the Brahmana? No. And in the, in the Bhagavad Gita and the Purport, Prabhupada gives the analogy of the fire, where he says that the fire may be covered by smoke, you know, but once that smoke dissipates, that fire is still essential. Likewise, all the varnas in the society are essential to keep this society together, right? And that is why it's so important that you focus on your own um, activity rather than trying to perform some other activity. And it says here, a Brahmana has to perform sacrifices in which animal killing is necessary. A Kshatriya, however pious he may be, has to fight enemies. Similarly, a merchant must sometimes hide his profit to, to stay in business and a Shudra may sometimes have to serve a bad master. Despite these flaws, one should continue to carry out his prescribed duties for they are born out of his own nature. Just as by removing the smoke, the fire is useful for removing darkness and cold. So by removing the faulty portion of one's work, the good portion is useful for purification of one's existence. I think this is so, so important for all of us to um, understand. So yeah, this, um, um, so these are, these are the verses where um, Krishna is talking about the Varnas and the prescribed duties. I'm just keeping a track of the time. Okay, the next few, um, the next section is verses 49 to 55 where um, the confidential knowledge is being um, shared here. So how from, um, from reaction free, so from Nishka, Makarma, Yoga, you can go to Jnana. So this is the, the yoga ladder actually, which we all have studied or have understood in the chapter three, four, three, four, I think, of the Bhagavad Gita. So here Krishna is describing how you can come to the uh, uh, Brahman uh, platform and from there to the pure devotional service. One thing to understand is that Yes, the yoga ladder is being described, how you can go from karma to jnana to, to bhakti, but very important to understand that uh, bhakti is not dependent on any of these and bhakti can be done in any circumstances. Uh, there's no rules or regulations. Anybody can perform bhakti, whether it is, you know, there's no age factor, there is no um, education factor, there's, there's nothing. So one doesn't even have to go through all these stages. One can just, uh, like Prabhupada would say, just you know, rather than taking the um, taking the steps and going up the yoga ladder one by one, just take the elevator and come up. You know, so that's um, that's bhakti. Um, yeah. So here it says the Brahma Bhuta stage of self-realization or liberation is the final aspiration on a, of an impersonalist. But bhakti is beyond Brahman realization. A personalist or pure devotee aspires to do bhakti or pure devotional service unto Lord Krishna. A devotee is already in a state of liberation or oneness with the absolute. Without being one with the Lord on a spiritual platform, one cannot render service unto him. So you see, we are talking about liberation is not something that a devotee wants. A devotee just wants to serve. And here... Um, a Prabhupada in the purport, he says, of 1855, when one hears about the Supreme Lord, automatically the Brahma Bhuta stage develops and material contamination, greediness and lust for sense enjoyment disappears. As lust and desires disappear, 
from the heart of a devotee, he becomes more attached to the service of the Lord and by such attachment, he becomes free from material contamination. In that stage of life, he can understand the Supreme Lord. So I was thinking that here we are talking about the Brahma Bhuta stage of self-realization. So what happens in the Brahma Bhuta stage of self-realization, sorry. Does anybody know like what are the uh, what are the qualities what does one you know what what how is a what does what does brahma bhuta stage mean that sanskrit word brahma bhuta prashnatma nashal chuti na kankati so then is samasar vishi bhuteshi madbhakti lavate param so you are, you have really actually in understanding full understanding Mm -hmm. You have understood that you are not the body, you are the spirit soul, mm -hmm. and you have dedicated yourself completely to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and there is no material modes of uh, nature is working on you. So that's what I understand. So, so here, one second. Sorry, I'm just. Uh, hmm. Sorry. I need to just get out of this thing. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. So, so you, yes, you, you recited the verse eighteen fifty four. But what would you say the qualities of somebody who has reached that stage would be? Uh, the qualities, uh, I mean, they're definitely the person who is in Brahma with the stage, they're beyond the modes of material nature. They're absolutely pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. And there is no modes of nature. Nature is completely surrendered to Krishna. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the stage that uh, one, we all should try. But obviously, then um, Krishna is talking about how we, uh, the devotee wants bhakti, you know, but once you reach the Brahma Bhuta stage, then from there, you can elevate yourself. Yeah, thank right. you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Palika So um, then over here is um, the next few verses, Krishna is explaining how his devotee attains him. So, um, 55 to 66 about pure bhakti, acting in Krishna consciousness, working in Krishna consciousness. So what it means to act in Krishna consciousness, it means that you act under the direction of the Supreme Lord. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes some people find it very difficult. And there have been comments where, you know, they say that um, it's, a, it's okay for Arjuna because he was on the battlefield and he was listening to Krishna directly. But then it's clearly stated so many times in the Bhagavad Gita itself and Prabhupada explains to us that acting under the instructions of a bona fide guru, Krishna's representative is the same. So once you are working according to Krishna's order, according to uh, Krishna's representative's order, then that is perfect Krishna consciousness. And that is what you are supposed, that is, that should be your goal where you are always uh, keeping Krishna in the center and anything that you're doing, you're thinking of, will this please Krishna? Am I doing this to please Krishna? So that is the most important thing. Um, and, and obviously um, the next, and then, and then Krishna goes on to uh, speak to Arjuna and, uh, you know, talks to him about uh, the more confidential knowledge, you know. So he's talking about um, surrendering. So, so, you know, in these few verses, Krishna has explained to Arjuna everything. And then he, in, in verse 63, he's asking that I have now explained to you everything. Deliberate on this fully and then do what you wish to do. Now, this is very, very important where he says, Yate chashi tatha kuru. So why it is important and what is what is what we need to understand from here? You see, Krishna being the Supreme Lord, he's still not interfering with our minute independence. Even at this stage, he has explained everything to Arjuna. And then he says to Arjuna, now you 
I've explained everything, you understand it, and then you decide what you want to do. Do what you wish to do. And this is amazing because, see, Krishna does not interfere, does not force us to do anything. Yes, he gives us, he gives us the entire knowledge. And then he asks, he's asking us to choose. What do you want to do? And this is wonderful. Now, what happens here is after all this has happened, um, Arjuna is, is, you know, standing and uh, thinking about this. And at that time, Krishna being this, the most loving uh, friend, he, he, you know, he thinks that he needs to speak something more to Arjuna. And so in the next few verses, he talks about, sorry, not this. Next few verses, he again explains to um, Arjuna um, how, you know, um, he spoke the, um, he speaks the essence of the, um, of the Bhagavad Gita. Um, if anybody could um, tell me the essence of the Bhagavad Gita and which verse it is, and please recite the verse if you don't mind. That of course is the essence. And then there is another verse just before that, 1865. So here, see, these two verses actually are the essence of the Bhagavad Gita and when um, uh, Krishna has explained everything to Arjuna, in verse um, 63, he says, okay, do what you wish to do. And Arjuna is contemplating. And then the next few verses, Krishna again, again, he's giving the essence that, you know, always think of me, become my devotee. This is what you should be doing. Just, just surrender unto me. This is what you should be doing. So Krishna is again emphasizing on what Arjuna should be doing. Although he's not forcing, you see, he's not forcing but he's giving him the essence, right? Um, so that's 66. I'm sorry, we are a bit, but this chapter is really, really big. So forgive me. Um, all right. And then from verses 67 to 64, then um, after, of course, uh, in these verses, Arjuna then has realized he has understood what he's supposed to do. And he says to Krishna that I have understood what my duties are. And you know, all, all that has happened. And then um, Krishna is speaking about what are the glories of preaching and studying the Bhagavad Gita. So these verses describe that, um, you know, if one studies the Bhagavad Gita. So here it says in verse 70, it says, I declare that he who studies the sacred conversation of ours worships me by his intelligence. And then Krishna also says that, you know, when, when Anyone who listens, of course, it says without with faith and without envy, um, attains to the auspicious planets. And anybody who tries to preach this is the most dear to me. So these are the few verses where uh, we're talking about the glories of the Bhagavad Gita. After, of course, Arjuna has realized what he should be uh, doing. Then I think uh, the next few verses are really, really um, important and uh, essential for us to understand in two ways. So here we see that these are the verses uh, 74 to 78, where now Krishna and Arjuna's conversation has ended. And um, Sanjay is who has been talking to Dhritarash throughout and has been telling him what is going on on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So these are the last few verses where Sanjay is sharing about, um, you know, how his hair is standing on end after listening to the conversation of these two great personalities, Arjuna and Krishna. And as Arjuna was fortunate to listen to Krishna directly, so by the grace of his guru Vyasadev, Sanjay also could hear Krishna directly. And so important that one can understand Krishna through the medium of the guru. So you see here Sanjay has been reciting to, to Dhritarashtra to everything because he, by the mercy of his guru, he was able to see everything that is happening on the battlefield, although he was not physically present. And this is called Shastra Chakshu. You know, by the Shastras, by the mercy of your guru, you can see things. 
And that is what is being explained that it is only through the medium of the guru that you can actually understand Krishna. And um, Sanjay, of course, was very, very fortunate that he had the blessings of Vyasadev. What is important to understand in these verses is to look at the um, devotional mood of Sanjay, where, you know, when he's describing the emotions that he's going through, sometimes, you know, we, we ignore these last few verses because uh, the conversation between uh, Arjuna and uh, Krishna is over. So, you know, we, we kind of think, okay, that's the end. But the, he, these verses also to understand that how, um, how this devotee is going through these various emotions after listening to the sacred conversation. We should actually beg and pray that the emotions that Sanjay is going through, maybe someday we also can experience the same after listening to the Bhagavad Gita from the, uh, you know, obviously it is from Prabhupada. So the pure devotee is writing the, you know, the purpose. And maybe someday we will be able to realize and understand the Bhagavad Gita and feel the same emotions. So we can pray for that. That's what I would like to um, share, I think. And I think I should stop here now. I'm sorry, it was a really, really long chapter. So I've gone a couple of minutes, 10 minutes over. Um, if there are any realizations, any comments, corrections, questions. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Um, I, I wanted to ask, is someone who is classed as a pure devotee in the Brahma Buddha stage? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, one would become a pure devotee only once he has reached the Brahma Bhuta stage. Okay. Yeah, because if you've not reached that stage, you would not become a pure devotee because you have to reach that stage where you are completely at peace with everything and nothing of this material world affects you or touches you. So you have to reach that stage in order to become a pure devotee. That's my understanding. Um, I'm not sure. Is 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 that right, Palika Mataji? Would you agree? <laughs> yes, Madhukumari. That's my understanding. Thank you. Yes, you have to you have to reach and the like like Shila Prabhupada. Yes. He was in he was in Brahmavuta stage, yes. so he knew exactly. That's why he had direct direct uh, instruction from Krishna, and that's why uh, Krishna empowered him, and that's why he could do so much for the whole world. And tiny little soul like us, we can't even, you know, preach our own family or you know like that. If we are on that stage, we could, have, we could, we could do that. So, yeah. your the the effect when when we are at that pure stage, I'm sure the people around us, whoever listen to us, because our consciousness is so pure, mm -hmm. anything touches uh, to our soul they will be elevated, they will be connected to Krishna. This is my understanding. Yeah, so one yeah, one has to be at the Brahma Bhuta stage, Pramila Mataji, to become a pure devotee. That's our devotee. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Ine. Any other questions or comments? Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. I just remember Krishnavani. Yes, Krishnavani Mataji. Mataji, like Srila Prabhupada says, you know, the purity is the force. Yes. So when by the purity, you know, you, there is no even need for preaching because yes. just your presence preaches. Yes, that's so true. That's so true, Krishnavani Mataji. And you know, uh, some of the disciples of Prabhupada used to speak about his presence. He wasn't like a very, very tall and you know that, but his presence, he, he, it was like, he used to glow like, like gold and he used to, he used to not walk, he used to float. This is the description that you read when you read some of the memories of the Prabhupada disciples. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Any other any other questions? Yeah, Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. I've got a question. Um, so I'm going back to the verse about um, what we should do depending on our varna. Mm. And um, the quote that you shouldn't do somebody else's occupation even if you do it perfectly. Mm. But your occupation depends on your psychophysical nature. So if you were to do something perfectly, then surely 
that must be in your psychophysical nature. So how can that be no, but somebody that, else's occupation? No, 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 but that's exactly what is being said, that your psychophysical nature, when you're calling it your psychophysical nature, that is your guna, hmm. right? So if you're doing your work according to your guna, then that is perfect. That's what is yes. being advised, that you must do the work according to your guna, but yeah. don't try to do something which is not your psychophysical nature. Yeah, but it's saying even if you did that, it's, it's better to do your guna imperfectly than something else perfectly. But if you were to do something perfectly, then surely that's... Ah, I get what you're saying. What you're you saying? Mean? If you're doing something... To be honest with you, even I had this question that if you're doing something perfectly, then that means it probably is your psychophysical nature. Mm. But Jai Shri Mataji, remember one thing, at least in today's what we can see today, that, yeah. you know, a lot of people get trained to do things and they get trained very well and they do things perfectly. But yeah. then over a period of time, they realize that I'm not happy doing this, although I'm yeah. doing it very well, mm. but I'm not happy because this is not my nature. Yeah. You see, there are so many cases where we hear that they've studied something, let's say uh, studied engineering and whatever. And then one goes on to become a teacher because I like that. That's my nature. Doing yeah. engineering, sitting in an office or making these big buildings is just not my nature. Although I am very good at it and I'm doing it perfectly. Mm. So yeah. I guess that is what it means that, you know, okay. you could be trained to do something very, very perfectly. But mm. if it is not your psychophysical nature, you will not be happy with it. Yeah. And so okay. then you will not get the results then. Because if you're not happy, then you're not going to do it properly mm. and then you won't get the results. So that's my understanding. Yeah. Because that was that was confusing me. A little yeah, me bit. too. Me too. But yeah. but but this makes sense to me that you know because today in today's day and age, see, we have to remember if we related to Vedic times, we didn't have that kind of facilities where you could be trained to do anything. Yeah. But today, today's day and age, you can be trained to do anything. Frankly, I mean, you mm. know, you could be trained to do something perfectly. But if that is not your psychophysical nature, then you will do it for years on end, and you will realize. That I don't really like this. I, and that is why we hear so many people changing their careers in midlife. You know, I wasn't happy yeah. with what I was doing, so I'm going to do a career shift. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mataji. That makes sense to you. Hope yeah. that kind of helps. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have something on the chat. Um, could you explain about the Brahmana performing animal sacrifice duties? Um, no, Santosh Mataji. In Vedic times, the Brahmanas used to perform animal sacrifice and animal sacrifice was spoken about in our um, scriptures and literatures. Also, the reason being that the animal that was being sacrificed, either he would come back um, in, a, in a better body, it could be a better animal body, or he would be elevated to the human body. So because the Brahmanas in those times knew those mantras and were well versed in reciting all these Vedic um, mantras. So that is why when they performed a sacrifice, they did not perform it for their sense gratification. They performed it for the benefit of the animal. And so in those times it was allowed. But like Prabhupada many times in his many lectures says, you cannot do that now because we don't have those qualities of Brahmanas anymore who can perform uh, the sacrifices uttering the um, uh, hymns and verses correctly and for that you know you can think about like in the Bhagavatam anyways we won't go into that but you know the, the moment you pronounce um, Sanskrit hymns wrong then the effects could be wrong and that is why Prabhupada said we cannot do that now but in those times the Brahmanas were qualified to do that so it was for the better of the animals hope that makes sense Hare Krishna Madhu Kumari. I just want to make a clarification. You know, they like just animal sacrifice. Those, um, you know, Ashwamedha Jagga, was it to liberate the, the animals or is it something else? Um, that's also an interesting question, Palika Mataji. And I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't be the authority to answer on this. But as for my understanding of what I have read and Prabhupada has spoken about these things is that um, any time that the animal sacrifice was done in those times uh, was two things. It was liberating the animals. It wasn't yes. that it was harming them. It was always for their better. And by doing that, obviously, it gave the, gave the humans also uh, an elevation. Like the Ashwamedha Yagya was performed so that 
one would be recognized as you know the authority on so many different different areas of the of the land but mm -hmm. um, the animals did not suffer is my understanding i could be wrong but that's my understanding okay also this is what my and that's why i wanted to clarify yeah i'm sure those kings they're saintly kings they wouldn't they Correct. will kill, kill the animals for the sake of killing to make Correct. you know themselves in an elevated position no, yeah this one, is... yeah one wouldn't do that because somebody like yudhishthir maharaj who is a dharma raj and yeah. krishna talks about how um, um any any citizen and by citizen they also include animals so why would he harm his his citizens like that yes that's correct thank you yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. I think I read somewhere it was also when the um, it was also checking out the effectiveness of the mantras that were done. Correct. And as you rightly said, a hundred percent, it was not to harm the animals. Correct. Yes. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right, if there are no more questions, then maybe we can stop. It's 10 to 9 now. And um, as you all know, we are going to start the new session tomorrow. Very, very exciting. We're going to start uh, from the first chapter. And a lot of you very kindly shared their uh, video clips with me, which, which is really helping us to encourage other people to join. I know not everybody is very, um, you know, um, happy or is, is you know, uh, likes doing videos. So I was, I was requesting people if they would even just send me like a little um, text of how Chad has been helping them because what we plan to do is put it all together in like a Word document and maybe share it with newcomers because I'll be honest with you, firsthand experience always encourages people. And if you see the video clips, some of them have been extremely like, you know, completely new people to Krishna consciousness and Bhagavad Gita. And this one year of attending chat sessions has changed them so much for the better. They are all so happy. So if you could even share just, um, you know, just a little text. Um, one of the uh, members of our chat group has sent me a wonderful text and I'll just, I'll share it with you on the group, but I'll speak about it now. And she said how she's been in Krishna consciousness for so long, but, um, and of course, even previously, she was inspired to read Srila Prabhupada's books, but just by attending the chat sessions, she was so much more inspired that now she's doing Bhakti Shastri course. She is on the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And she's so happy that she's, you know, um, reading um, Prabhupada's book. So I feel as, you know, newcomers, as well as devotees, all of us are getting inspired by attending these chat sessions. And if we could get more and more people, because that's what Prabhupada wanted, that's what, all, you know, our ISKCON should be doing and we should be we all should try and help in whatever way we can so if you could just share a little bit you know just a small you know 10 lines of um, how chad has helped you it would be amazing thank you very much all right nicely done madhu kumari thank I, you. I send it to so many people so that people can get attracted and can join oh that's so kind nicely of done well done Thank I you. didn't do it, Mataji. It was my daughter. I have no clue about all these things. <laughs> my daughter did all the editing. Yeah, it, she was. It's just Krishna's mercy. She just happened to be here yesterday. She's normally not in London, and she just happened to be here. And I said to her, you know, uh, Divya Nam Prabhu said, and and we just managed to do it. So it was yeah, it's very nicely done. Well done. It's under the guidance of Divya Nam Prabhu. Yeah, he's very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It will be very nice tomorrow, Akshay Teta, and starting again, the yes. beautiful, yeah. Yes, Tittai Mata Mataji, your message is so wonderful. So oh it's Tittai Mata Mataji who has been speaking about how uh, Chad inspired her to, you know, uh, start reading and again, and she's doing Bhakti Shastri, and so it's amazing, it's amazing. Yeah. Wonderful session, Mataji, so nice. Thank I'm you. happy that you're my god sister. Ah, thank you so much, Prabhuji. Please bless me. Please I, bless me. I want you to impress other ladies that they too can do this because I think the ladies are doing wonderful session. Look at the height of the session. You had, I think, 50 or over participants. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. So it's so nice. I'm sure some of the ladies there can do just as well. Yeah. So please, you know, you are encouraging them so much. So this is so nice. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji, for your kind words. Please bless me and pray for me that I can continue doing this. You are a wonderful warrior of Srila Prabhupada, so don't worry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We all have our strengths, Prabhuji. You are such a wonderful book distributor. I don't think so. I'm trying my best. <laughs> like I said, we all have our strengths and we just discussed that verse that, you know, we should do what, what our psychophysical nature, I guess, is, you know, or, and, and try to do that perfectly, I guess. Uh, but the chat session, I have to be honest, we found it so invigorating over the last 12 months. So it is so important to continue. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. With your blessings, hopefully we will continue. Uh, yeah. in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very enlightening. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you for a most wonderful summary. It was so, con so concise, so so on the point, so wonderful. And and to think that you had to put that together last minute, how wonderful that was. Very Thank nice. Thank you so wonderful. much. Well, well done. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji.